There's something about the waters of Lake Havasu that aren't always kind to the favored racers. It's interesting how often many of the top racers on the planet have mechanical problems or a rare stumble, and this year's Pro Ski Open class is a perfect example. Starting off with Moto1, the living legend of IGSBA racing, Mike Klippenstein, launched his Mark Queen tuned hydrospace into the lead on the inside split. Mike has earned more IGSBA World Championships, 23, than any other human and is always a strong contender in any class he races in. But it was Almar Ben Harez that used the extra long front straight of the outside split to blow past Klippenstein into the lead. Ben Harez was also considered to be a significant contender entering the weekend with a very well-financed racing effort. Say what you will about cubic dollars, but it's rarely a bad thing. Klippenstein had already suffered from ski issues during qualifying, requiring him to get in through the last chance qualifier. Unfortunately, his headaches weren't over just yet. At the end of lap one, Austrian Kevin Ritterer had caught up with Ben Harez to challenge for the lead. K. Ritt had already nailed down the Pro Ski GP class win on Saturday and looked every bit the part of the champion of the Open class as well. The lead was easily his coming off the split entering lap two. Tyron Matsuris claimed his first pro win at the third round of the U.S. Pro National Tour in Reno, Nevada earlier this year. And while he would be considered an underdog at the World Finals, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Tyron passed Ben Harais for second going into lap three. Later on lap three, Tyron's brother Dustin Matsuris also passed Ben Harais for third. The former Pro Ski World Champion is always a major contender, and his teaming up with builder and tuner Steve Webster is a formidable combination. Unfortunately for Tyron, the log jumps became a stumbling block that negated his chances for a podium finish in Moto1. Kevin Ritterer, a smooth, polished, issue-free performance in Moto1 for the perfect start to the Open Class 3 Moto Series. For Moto2, life would be very different. The winds out of the north had picked up to a steady 15 to 25 knots, making the conditions more like a moto surf race, with swells averaging two to three feet on the back part of the course. Mike Klippenstein again powered to the lead on the inside. Mike suffered a broken crankshaft in Moto1, necessitating a switch to a backup ski for Moto2. Kevin Redderer paced behind Klippenstein in second. No need to push it just yet with such a long, grueling race ahead. He had also switched to a backup ski for Moto2. Euro champion Jeremy Pere was in third behind k on a Kawasaki SXR, looking for an opportunity to move up. It didn't take long as Redderer faltered on a log jump. Kevin quickly recovered, staying in front of Matsuris, who had also fallen earlier in the moto. Jimmy Wilson out of Sanford, North Carolina, put in a solid performance on his Kawasaki SXR for a very respectable fourth place finish. Jeremy Pere paced by Klippenstein for the first half of the race until Clipper crossed himself up at the end of the log jumps, opening up an opportunity for Pere. Mike had a quick recovery, and the race for the lead was on. Even with the fall and subsequent separation from his ski, Mike salvaged a respectable fifth place finish in Moto2. Ray was superhuman, continuing on showing no signs whatsoever of fatigue. 
the land of unpronounceable names, Norway's Stein Schicheling raced at a cautious pace for a sixth place finish in Moto2. At the checker, it was all about Frenchman Jeremy Perret on his Kawasaki SXR. Perret was followed by Redderer, Valentin Dardelet, Wilson, and Klippenstein. While Moto2 was all about rough conditions, Moto3 was a race for light against the setting sun as the final race of the day was held in the golden hour of the day. The wind had receded and conditions had returned to be relatively normal. Stein Schichling took the whole shot in the inside half of the starting gate. Jeremy Perret took the whole shot for the outside half and used the front straight advantage to take the Moto lead over Stein. Unfortunately for Perret, he was also carrying the baggage of a dreaded 18th place finish in Moto1. Kevin Redditor was in fourth position behind Dardelay, Chicheline, and Perret. On lap two, Frenchman Valentin Dardelay found himself in the deep end of a sinkhole that slowed Dardelay just enough for Redditor to challenge for third. Three laps later, Redderer passed Schicheling for second. In the final few laps of the moto, a hard-charging Dustin Matsuris challenged Dardelay for fourth position. At the sunlit checkers, it was Frenchman Jeremy Perret with his second moto win of the day. Jeremy was followed by Stein Schichling in second, Kevin Redder in third, and Dustin Matsuris that nipped our delay in the split course for fourth. Crunching the results numbers on our IGSBA Radio Shack calculator gives us Austrian Kevin Redder as our overall Pro Ski Open champion. A huge congratulations to Kevin and all of our top five finishers in the Pro Ski Open class at the 2014 IJSBA World Finals.